Hello saxophones and welcome to your snow day lesson. We are going to be learning two new notes today, C and D. But first you need to assemble your instrument. So please um, pause this video, put your instrument together. Remember to put your reed on last and remember to make your neck strap short enough so your instrument comes right to your mouth. Use cork grease on the neck if you need to. Pause the video now. Welcome back. We have to warm up. Sit up nice and tall. You can put your saxophone down on your lap. I'm letting mine just hang from my neck strap and I'm holding it, supporting it a little bit under the bell. If you put it on your lap or you, if you put it on a table with hopefully nothing really else on it, make sure you put the side with no keys down. You don't want to bend any keys. Sit up nice and tall. Use a lot of fast air and repeat after me. Alright, now we have to warm up actually playing on our instrument. I would like you to select two songs that you know that we've played. It could be Hot Cross Buns, Mary Had a Little Lamb, See O Gone, which you also know as Gently Sleep, Eau Claire de la Lune, any of these. Pick two of them and I would like you to play them nice and slowly using lots of air. Make sure they sound beautiful. You can pause the video right now to do that. Now that you are warmed up, we have to learn our new notes. So, so far you know G, A, and B, and the fingering pattern has been to lift one off. So now what we are doing is we put our middle finger down for C. That's it. Just your middle finger on your top left hand for C. Just like recorder. Sit nice and tall. Get ready to play C. You're going to repeat after me. C. Now for D, we put down many more fingers. Start with G, the fingering for G, and you add your thumb on this octave key that we have not used yet. So your thumb should already be on this landing pad close to that octave key. Now all you have to do is scooch up and push it down. We are not done yet. We're finally getting to use our lower right hand. Your fingers should already be hovering above these pearl keys when you're playing any other note. Now you just have to use all three of your fingers. First finger, middle finger, ring finger. So you don't need your pinky on either hand yet. But you have all your right hand fingers down besides the pinky. And you have all of your left hand fingers down first finger, middle finger, ring finger, and your thumb in the back, and that's D. Get set up. If you need to pause the video to get your finger set up, you can do that. And you're gonna repeat me again, but on D.
that is D. Now you either have in your folder workouts for your face. That's what it's that's what the paper is called, workouts for your face. There are pictures of little people exercising. Um, you might have that. If you do not have that, I will be putting that up on this website. So look up at the top of the website. There are buttons. There's one that says more. Click on that and then click on documents. And that will take you to the page where there will be workouts for your face for saxophone. And what that does, we're going to use just number one right now. All it is is a little scale. It uses all of your notes that you know so far, starting with your lowest note, going up to your highest note. So you can either print that out, or you might either already have it in your, in your folder. So right now, please pause the video and get that out. If you need to go print, I'll see you in a little while. All right, hopefully you have workouts for your face. If you have trouble with it, come see me during school and I will be able to give you one of those before you go on to the rest of this video lesson. So that just goes through all the notes that you know. So please look at it, look at each measure, and figure out what note it is, how many times you play it. And be careful, it's actually two lines long. You go all the way up to your highest note, D, and all the way back down to your lowest note, G. So go through tapping your foot, doing the fingers and saying the note name, all the way through both lines. And please do that now. You can pause the video. Now that you've said the fingerings, or said the note names and done the fingerings, you can play it. If you have trouble with going from C to D, because you're going from one finger to lots of fingers and your thumb, then don't play the whole scale. Just play C to D. That I might be singing it wrong. Just play C to D. C to D. Give yourself six seconds to change your fingers from C to D and six seconds to go from D to C. And then give yourself five. And then give yourself four and then eventually you'll be able to do it. Remember to keep your fingers really close to the keys. I keep mine on the keys, but just not pushed down. If you're way out here, you're gonna hit wrong keys. You're not gonna know where you are. Hover closely. So right now I would like you to go through and actually play workout number one. Remember it's two lines long. Pause the video now. All right, you've played workout one. If you have trouble with it, don't go on to this next part. Use the next few days to keep practicing workout one. We are going to learn a song called El Toro. It's in your book on page seven. This is what it looks like. It's number 13. Sorry if it's backwards. It uses your two new notes and one of your old notes. So we're going to look at the first four measures, the first half of El Toro right now. Look at the first measure. What note or notes do you play? How many beats does each note get? How many times do you play each note? If you need to pause to think about these answers, please do. Second measure. What note do you play? How many times do you play it? How many beats does each get? Third measure. The pattern's a little different now. What notes do you play? How many beats does each one get? How many times do you play each note? Third measure. What notes do you play? How many times do you play it? How many beats does each one get? Great, if you're still figuring that out, pause the video and then come back. I will be here. Once you're done with that, we're going to clap it. Pause the video, get your foot tapping and clap through that whole first half. Pause it right now. Now that you've clapped it, you're going to do the fingerings and say the note name for the first half of El Toro. Go ahead and pause right now. So you've done the fingerings while saying the note names. Now it's time to actually play the first half. Good for you. Get your foot tapping. Go nice and slowly so you have a chance to move your fingers. 
without having to change your, your beat, your steady foot tapping. Pause now and play the first half. Second half of El Toro. Look at it and compare it to the first half. You can put your finger on the fifth measure. That's the first measure of the second half. And put your other finger on the first measure of the whole song. What's the same, what's different? Go on to the second measure of each half. What's the same, what's different? You should notice that learning this part, not gonna be very difficult. You've already learned that in the beginning. The third measure of the first half and the third measure of the second half. So you're comparing the third measure in the song and the second to the last measure in the song. What's the same, what's different? There is a difference in this one. The fourth measure compared to the last measure. What's the same and what's different? If you need to pause to figure these out, please do. Now, clap the second half. Measure five, six, seven, and eight of El Toro. Pause the video and clap it. Now that you've clapped it, you're gonna say the note names and do the fingerings. Pause the video and do that. All right, almost there. Here we are, you're gonna play the second half of El Toro. Measure five, six, seven, and eight. Pause the video and play it. Now, if you're having trouble with any part of this song, don't play through the whole thing. Don't keep going on with my directions. Pause the video and go and play the hard parts. Find just a little bit of a hard part, even if it's going from one note to another, C to D or D to C, and go back and forth between those notes. That's how practicing works. You find the hard spot, you do just the hard spot, and then you put it back in with the rest of the song. If you did a nice job and you worked through the hard parts, you're ready to go on to playing the whole song. Pause the video, play the whole song. Make sure you do it nice and slowly with a steady beat. You have played El Toro. Um, keep practicing. If there were some parts that weren't perfect, that's normal. Go back and fix those hard spots and then play through the whole song to see if, you, if they work with the, in the whole song. If it sounds good, make it a little faster, make it a little faster, and then you can play with the CD from the back of the book. You can see that there's a little icon that says that it's in the CD in the back of your book. Oh, mine's right here. It should be track 13. Go ahead and try it. If you have any questions, any concerns, any problems, if you need that workouts for your face worksheet, come see me during school. Have a musical day.